Time to talk about the wonderful world of rendering, where you hit a button on your keyboard and then you sit back and you wait days, weeks, sometimes months, sometimes for your hard work to materialize. Rendering, uh, particularly rendering an animation, is uh, is quite painful for a lot of people um, because you'll you'll see this this was one single frame and it took 16 seconds to render, which by the way is incredibly fast, as you will find out yourself, I'm sure, if you haven't already. 16 seconds, but this this is a 30 frame animation. And uh, if we were to get out a calculator, let, and let's say we wanted 10 seconds, just 10 seconds of animation uh, at 30 frames, uh, that's 300 frames, 16 seconds, which would take us 80 minutes to render, just 10 seconds of animation, right? So you can see why, by the way, uh, like a Pixar movie or any Disney, like fully animated movie that's an hour and a half long at least, at way more complexity, way more real, way more objects. Uh, you can see why they spend sometimes months rendering on render farms, which is just like rooms filled with servers and air blowing and just, just like souping through it. <laughs> As he visited the Pixar office and they got, yeah, like the render farm, they got like this neon sign. It's like render farm. Always open, 24-7, like this, like, like looks like a pub, like 24-7. I don't know. It was kind of cute. But anyways, um, so point is, is like rendering is, it's painful for a lot of people. And you, every artist wants to reduce their render times whilst retaining quality to the highest amount. So in Blender, there are three things that really are like the cornerstones of what will contribute to your render time. Uh, the first one might sound obvious, but it needs to be said, is the dimensions, the size of the image that is being rendered. So we're rendering at 1080 by 1080, this square frame here. If we were to double the resolution, say set this from 100% to 200%, which you can do by the way, um, guess how much longer that would increase our render times? If we doubled the resolution, if you guessed it would double the render times, incorrect. Uh, the correct answer is it would actually quadruple the render times because you are not only doubling the uh, pixels this way, but also this way as well. So that is four times the number of pixels, which is why it's four times the amount. So that's a really important thing. And it took me, I remember like puzzling at that because like I would set like the render times to 50% to do like my previews. And then I would do like 100% for the final render. And then I was like, wait a minute, why is it taking four times as long? I didn't account for this. And then I like, asked online and someone's like, duh, there's two axes of pixels. I'm like, oh yeah. Anyways, so that's one important point. If you wanna go 4K, good luck to you. It's gonna take a really, really long time to render. Um, I guess the other thing, if you're doing animations, another one to, to keep in mind is the number of frames. If you're rendering at a frame rate of 60 frames a second, guess what? You gotta render double the number of frames, uh, which is why people, I think there was a, a latest, um, not a Peter Jackson film. What was the what was the movie? It was rendered like 120 frames, I think. Um, insane. Uh, that's just that's insane. And I'm sure their render bill was through the roof. But anyways, so that's number one resolution. Uh, the other one is your hardware. That might sound obvious, but it needs to be said as well. The reason this frame rendered at 16 seconds, which is very fast, uh, is because I've got two 1080. Uh, TI graphics cards, and they are rendering at the for each one. So that's why when I hit render, you'll see that I have uh, two tiles that will appear, these two little squares, right? It'll go tick, tick, tick. You can see there's actually two there. Is there two? It looks like, oh yeah, it's happening fast enough that it looks like one. But anyways, <laughs> it's, uh, it's doing two because there are two graphics cards working at the same time. Um, and if you're rendering on CPU, you would actually see probably like 16 of them, um, but they would be much slower. Um, so hardware is very, very important. Um, yeah, some of you have been writing in the comments saying like, oh, mine's like two hours long. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll show you a couple of things we could do to maybe help with that, but you it's gonna be slow no matter what. And that's okay, but it's just gonna be slow until you upgrade your hardware. Um, it's just one of those things. How fast do you want it to be? Spend more money. So uh, the final thing and the third thing that has like the biggest impact is of course the samples. So the samples is, um, is that grain that appears on an image. And you can't see the grain because in the compositor, you'll remember we're using this denoise, this fancy denoise thing in 2.81. Um, but the, the actual image looks like this. Very noisy, very 
um, very grainy, right? Um, and then it's doing this denoising step over the top of it. And then it's like intelligently smoothing it out. But you'll see because this, the image started very grainy, um, it's actually got some artifacts in it, particularly on this coffee cup over here. It's got this like jaggedy kind of look to it, right? So uh, yeah, basically the, the, the higher you set your sample count to, the more grain free and clearer it will appear, but the longer your render times will be. So uh, yeah. We need to, uh, you need to account for that. So one thing that is important is uh, if we look in render view mode, we're currently using something called path trace rendering with a flat 50 samples. Um, and you'll see that, that some parts of it, in fact, let's just go back to the compositor. That's probably clearer. Not the denoise mode. So yeah, some parts actually look very clear, right? Like the table, uh, the, the donut, like this donut icing here looks really clear. And then other parts like the copy cup itself looks incredibly noisy. So if we were to apply, like if we just doubled the sample count, right? Um, that would help, but we would be doubling the sample count in areas that look clear versus areas that look noisy. So this is, this is a little, I mean, this isn't really that advanced, but it's like an, a step that a lot of beginners don't know about. And that is that you can change from path tracing to branched path tracing, which gives you more control over where you're putting those samples. So as well as these, these settings up here, you also get all these settings down here. So this uh, diffuse glossy transmission, AO, mesh light, subsurf volume, that applies to the number of samples that is going to each material attribute. So diffuse is the parts that already look clear, basically. The skin of this, this icing, the hard table there, um, it looks clear and that's the diffuse part of it. The transmission part is anything which is, um, yeah, like glass or water. So that is our, our cup over there. So if we were to set this transmission amount to, instead of one, so, so okay, so to explain it, it's doing 30 samples. It was previously set to 50, but I've changed this to 30. Um, it's doing 30 samples. And then this is kind of, think of this like a multiplier. So if 30 samples on the diffuse, on the gloss, on this, and you can see actually the total count are written down here. If I set this transmission here to be two, you can see that it's now got 30, 30, 30, 60 for the transmission, because it's 30 samples times two on the transmission. And that will clear up some of the, uh, yeah, it'll clear it up on the, uh, on the transmission. In fact, let me do a control B that enables you to draw a border when you're looking through the camera. So it just singles out that one section of the frame. So we can just have a look at that. Um, and let's set the viewport to be 30 samples. Um, as, so it's exactly the same as the renderer. So it, it looks better now. So this is how it looks before, right? Uh, 30 samples. So that's 30 samples. You can see how noisy that looks. And then let's double that. And it should look a little bit clearer. It might not look double clear, but it, it should look a little bit clear. If we set this to 10, it's now doing 30 times 10. So 300 samples on the transmission. And you'll see it, it is taking longer. So of course, because it's more samples, it's, it's gonna take longer. You don't get, you, you don't usually get free clearness for nothing, but it, it's looking better. And then we, like, let's uh, add some to the gloss as well. So this reflection that's coming off the side of the glass there, that's the gloss. So let's set that to five. So five times on the gloss, 10 times on there. So we've got 150 glossy samples, um, 300 for the transmission. Um, and that's pretty good. So you can see that uh, we were able to clear that up and we should have, not that much of an effect over the rest of the scene. So all this other area over here should still be like rocket fast, um, but the glass itself, it'll take a little longer on because we're giving it more samples because it needs more samples. So um, yeah. And by the way, if you're listening to this and you're thinking like, wow, I've never used branch path tracing. I only recently used it myself <laughs> because I was thinking like, I was like looking at the thing and I'm like, man, it's really noisy on that coffee cup. And then I was like, wait, there's a feature in Blender where you can add more samples to the thing. And then I just delved deep into brush, branched path tracing and uh, I learned all about it. So um, anyways, now that we've done this, let's give this a render with these new settings and see how this comes out. Okay, and this is the render that we've got. So it's now taking 39 seconds. It was 16 seconds before, but it's much clearer. So this, uh, by the way, we haven't talked about slots, but when you're rendering something, you can set the slot and then you can go back and forth before, uh, 
Yeah. So basically, if you want to like do a comparison, like say I make a change now and I want to do another render, you would set to an empty slot, like uh, slot five, then do the render, and then you can go back and revisit them. Anyways, so slot three, this is how it looked before. 16 seconds, very noisy. Uh, slot four, it's more than doubled the render times, but it's night and day. The clarity and the detail in that coffee cup there is much, much clearer. You're seeing a lot more detail. And uh, when we do the uh, denoising step, um, so this denoiser thing here, by the way, it, it's it's here and we're previewing it by looking through the viewer node and that's what's appearing in the background. But the render is actually, uh, it's always defined by the composite node. So if you're looking in the compositor and things look different to what it is in the render, make sure that your composite and your viewer node um, are coming from the same place, okay? And um, by the way, when you make a change to the composite node, it won't change, uh, it won't change your render unless you are actively looking through the, oh, come on, through the image, image editor, render result. And then when you do that, it'll actually update the finished render that you have done. And there you go. So, so that's, that's our nice final crisp, clear render. It's gonna take 39 seconds on my two GTX 1080. TIs. Um, by the way, if you've only got one graphics card, if you had the exact same graphics card as me and uh, you only had one of them, it would pay basically double the render time because the extra graphics cards you add, you add are basically, it's, yeah, it's like having another computer <laughs> assist with it, which is why a lot of gra uh, like 3D artists, they have multiple graphics cards stacked up on top of each other so that they can like churn through things faster. Anyways, um, so that's it. Um, now, one other final thing we're gonna turn on is motion blur. Because we've got an animation, we gotta use some a little bit, of, little bit of motion blur. And it should be nice and fast now because Blender's been recently updated so that motion blur um, used to take a really long time to render motion blur, but it should be relatively fast. Oh, I just realized for my comparison render, I set it to path tracing, anyway. And one other final thing I would uh, would talk about is color grading. You can do color grading if you want. Um, so if you go to the composite, compositing tab over here, by the way, I'm hitting V and then Alt V to zoom in and out of the uh, backdrop, uh, the backdrop in the compositor. But anyways, after your denoiser, if you wanted to do some color grading, you could add in a color, color balance node. And then this would give you this, this uh, setup here. If you wanted to do like some fancy color grading, um, very similar to grading that's done on films, right? You've got the lift gamma gain or what is actually preferred because you'll manage your color data better is offset power slope. Exactly looking same thing, except this middle slider here is like inverted. But anyway, if you wanted to like add like uh, some like highlights to things, you could like increase that amount there. And you can see like the highlights are now a little, a little tighter. Um, and then you could also add like, if you wanted to have maybe a little bit of a pink hue to the midtones, you could change this to the green place because this middle slider is inverted. Um, and in doing so, if I pull this out even further, you'll see it gets really purple there, right? So you kind of like, yeah, it's, you know, color grading is like a fine, it's like a whole other art that you have to learn to do well. Um, so I, I, I don't know, I don't want to get too much into it, but I wanted to mention it briefly because it's something that you could do. And uh, yeah, let's crush the midtones a little, just a tiny little smidge there just by increasing that light value. Um, and uh, that's basically all the color grading I'm gonna do. The, the uh, like if you wanted a really simple way to color grade, you could change your look here to be, um, to be instead of medium contrast by default, like high contrast or very high contrast or the opposite direction. So you've got like some easy looks there if you wanna flip through things. And then you've also got curves down there if you wanted to just like play around with this, you can do that as well. But the color grading, proper color grading is done in the compositor like so. Um, so that's it. So motion blur is set. We've set up all our things. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do the final, we're gonna do the final render. How about this? It's finally come to it. Dun, 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 dun. It's near the end. Um, so to do our render, we want to render into frames. So to do this final render animation, um, a lot of people think that to render an animation to a final video, you would go, okay, so your, your output is here and your file format is PNG. Oh, I'm gonna save it to like a movie. Don't do that because when you do that, if you use any of these for your rendered output, what's gonna happen is, is if you got like 
99% of the way through your animation and then it crashed or your computer restarted because Windows is like, here's an update, um, you're gonna lose it. Or you could render the full thing and then that file could become corrupted for whatever reason. That is a pain in the ass. Um, and also that's like a very lossy format. You're gonna lose a lot of information in that. You don't want that. You want to render each frame to its own separate PNG. So you're gonna end up with a folder with 30 PNGs in it afterwards. And then in the next video, we're gonna be compiling that into one finished video. And we can do that inside of Blender, but it has to be done in two steps. I, it, it, it just has to be, it has to be, there's no other way. I, I will fight anyone who tells me otherwise, but you have to do it, it's two separate steps. So you're gonna choose your, your folder here. So go ahead, find somewhere, obviously on your computer, um, let's go new folder, part five, that's what this is. <laughs> and we'll call this frames. So I typically just make a new folder in my blend folder. I call it frames. And then I add another one because it's always, you have to render multiple versions of the animation because you render the full thing out. You wake up in the morning and you check it and you go, damn, I forgot to turn that, that collection on or whatever. So one, that's, that's our first one. And I'm going to hit accept. So to render this, to start rendering it, you remember like if you hit F12, that's to render a still frame and it's not saved anywhere until you actually go image save as. To render an animation, you go render animation. And when you do that, it'll cycle through it and it'll do frame by frame by frame. And at the end of each frame render, it will save it to the folder that you have specified as a PNG file. So this is gonna take roughly 40 seconds. <laughs> Calculator. Thirty-nine seconds. Thirty frames. That's sixty seconds. Nineteen minutes. Nineteen minutes. That's pretty fast. I'll have lunch and I'll come back and it'll be done because we're only doing thirty frames. So leave that to render and then in the next video I'll show you how to compile it into the final video and that'll be the final video of this series. So join me and I will see you there.